Hey, brand builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out this interview. As always, it's our honor to provide it to you for free and wanted to let you know there's no big sales pitch or anything coming uh, at the end. However, if you are someone who is looking to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you and get to know you a little bit and hear about some of your dreams and visions and share with you a little bit about what we're up to to see if we might be a fit. So if you're interested in a free strategy call with someone from our team, we would love to hear from you. You can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall, brandbuildersgroup.com slash podcall. We hope to talk to you soon. I was having a, a recent conversation about growth and scale and which one do you need when? And I had kind of like teed up this conversation as growth is about growing revenue, but scale is about growing profits. And so when should you turn your focus from growth to scale? And in this really helpful conversation, that whole idea just kind of imploded. Um, in a really healthy way. And so I thought it was worth sharing is that don't think about growth versus scale. We as business owners, uh, personal brands, entrepreneurs, all the same thing. Uh, we need both. We need growth and we need to be paying attention to scale when it comes to profits early on. But don't confuse the two, right? Healthy growth means that you're not going to go out of business. You're not going to run out of steam. You're not going to experience burnout. You're not trying to do it in some expeditious manner where you're spending all this money before you're making it. But you can grow and have a focus on profits too. And it's kind of this concept of you should always have a focus on profits, even in the midst of growth or scale, even when you're doing capital investments uh, with personnel hiring or technology or real estate, it's like, that doesn't mean you don't have a focus on profits. You always have a focus on profits, even in the midst of growth phases. And scale does not always mean that there is a revenue growth and a scale growth. Um, and scale means you're growing profits. That's not really the right way to think about it. And it was such a healthy conversation for me to come back and go, whoa, okay, I need to realign my thinking here. It's like, I always need to be focused on profits, even in heavy growth seasons. And it's not that you can grow or scale. It's like, oh, they happen together. They can happen together, but you got to have a good plan. So that's what the rest of this conversation is about is how do you have a plan for healthy growth while also keeping, keeping your eyes on profits, which should always just happen synchronistically, right? It's not one or the other. So here's a couple of things that came out of this conversation. Um, is that typically there are two phases of business. Phase one, get customers. Phase two, improve operations. And they go in that order. <laughs> so I just know that it is easy to sometimes, oftentimes, get distracted by going, we need to create better services. We need to have uh, better marketing. We need better this. We need more of this. We need to da 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 and we take our eye off the ball, which is actually what keeps us in business, which is we need to get more customers and we need to keep the ones that we have. And that is a part of improving operations and improving systems. But you can't improve on what you have if you don't have customers coming in. So this is in order. One, get customers. Two, get more customers. Three, improve operations. That's in order, right? And often uh, we spend all of our money doing the latter too soon. And that doesn't mean you don't still have a heart and a desire and a passion for your customers. But in order to do all the other things, you have to have customers, you have to have revenue to then have expenses to do those things. So get customers, get more customers, improve operations. Uh, that's the order that it goes in. Uh, always keep a focus on profits, even when you start. You don't, don't sell yourself on the bad idea that you're in startup mode, so there are no profits. That's bad business. That's bad mindset. That's a bad thinking. Um, it's like, no, you can have a startup and still have profits. That just takes discipline. That takes patience. And those are things that are required for good, healthy growth. Uh, it's good. It was a good reminder for me. Um, it's not growth versus scale. It's growth and scale. And the reason that people don't like to talk about growth often is because growth sounds like work. 
And scale sounds like automation, <laughs> so, like, but growth is work, but that's what works, right? It, it does take effort uh, and it takes investment of time, money, and resources. Uh, yeah, growth is work, but it's also what works. Um, the other thing is just this importance, like the radical importance of your mindset um, as an entrepreneur um, that's and not just an entrepreneur, but just as a human being, the mindset is really important. And so these were some of like the key takeaways from this conversation um, around growth and scale, but more important of, well, how do you get there? And the conversation naturally led, lended itself to this important conversation on attitude and mindset. And uh, these are a few of the takeaways that really resonated with me. So I hope they resonate with you is uh, number one, you need people. So don't take advantage of them. And don't take them for granted. You need them. You need people as clients. You need people as team members. Uh, you need people as your friends. Uh, you need people. And people are not a burden. They're a privilege. And it's not your burden to lead people. It's your privilege to lead people. And that's a radical mindset, right? I hear this term a lot. Like, I got people problems. No, you don't. <laughs> not you have people responsibilities right and that's just a slight mindset change now I don't have people problems I have people responsibilities because it's my privilege that I get the chance to lead a team of people who are committed to me and my company and my mission that is a privilege that I get and it's my responsibility to help lead these people uh, it's not a burden to to take care of problems so so powerful um, just really helpful of going the way that we allow ourselves to talk to ourselves and the way that we allow things to populate in our vernacular and our vocabulary and our conversations, it actually does one of two things is incredibly helpful or it's incredibly detrimental. And it's completely the thoughts and the words that you allow into your mind that put you on a certain trajectory. You are rather going to go down the path of, I have all these problems, all these people, all these issues. And then you're just, it's Debbie Downer mode, right? It's like, I got all these things to do and it's so crazy. Or it's, I get the privilege of leading a group of people that have, are committing 40 hours of their life to me every week. And they're committed to seeing through a vision um, that they're buying into. Like that's a privilege. What a different even uh, physical feeling that comes upon me of going, it's my privilege, not my burden, right? It's my responsibility, not my problem. Just those little things make a radical difference in how you view growth and revenue and customer acquisition and customer retention and profits and scale. Just those two slight things majorly just in a 45 minute conversation can shift the way that you approach the rest of your day, if not your month or even your life. So your mindset matters when it comes to how you want to grow your business, how you, how you want to actually keep people, keep clients and retain profits. Your mindset matters. And then the last thing I was going to share from this conversation is I asked a question. I said, if there was one common denominator of success of like, when you see this and people or companies um, if there was one thing that you said, I know when I see this, that success in, is inevitable. It may not be around the corner, but it's inevitable for this person in this company. What would that one thing be? What would that common denominator be? And I love the answer to this question. He said, uh, I know for a fact when people can actually see in themselves and their own companies, the mistakes that they've made and they have the courage to change them. I know that at some point, they're going to win it, whatever they're doing. It's going to turn successful. It's going to grow. It's going to have profits. It's going to make a difference. But when you're able to look yourself and your company in the mirror and go, that's not working. That was a mistake. And that's okay. Cause we can change it. And when you have the courage to do that and you actually do the, have the discipline to do the work that it takes to make those changes at some point, down the line, it, it could be quickly, it may not be quickly, but at some point you're going to be successful. That was really humbling and enlightening of going, all it takes 
is for me to be honest with myself about what I'm doing in my own business and my, with my own time. And that is the indicator of success of, can I be honest enough and then have the courage to do the work that's required to make the change? So helpful. It was like this uh, philosophical dream happened <laughs> in this conversation uh, with so many nuggets um, in such a good way. So I took away so much. I hope that you grabbed at least something um, from my downloads and uh, hopefully it helps you in your business and on your day. And if it is enough, not today, that it helps you at some day in the future. So I'll catch you next time. Until then, I'll see you later.